Good morning. Morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York, as we celebrate this fifth and final Sunday of Lent. Whether you're with us this morning in person or online, please know that however you have joined us, your presence enriches our worship. Our God makes all things new. In the first reading, God promises it. In the gospel, Mary anticipates it. Anointing Jesus' feet with costly perfume in preparation for the day of his burial. In the second reading, Paul recalls his transformation from the persecutor Saul into an apostle. In baptism, God's new person, you, rises daily from the deadly mire of trespasses and sin. So now I invite you all to join me in a time of confession and forgiveness. In the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we, we confess, confess that we have wandered far from you. We have, we have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love, and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, 
the word draws near to you. And all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn number 324. In the cross of Christ I glory. Hymn number 324. Like a whip. 
do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. To give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will read a section from Psalm 126 responsibly. I will begin with the odd verses, and you may follow with the even verses. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sow with the tears will reap the songs of joy. Those who are weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from Philippians. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I have, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain uh, Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God, based on faith. I want to know Christ in the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own, his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I can do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on forward to the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ's name. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to the poor. He said this 
not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> so, what is the most extravagant thing or event that you've ever seen that you can think of? Picture it in your mind. For me, one example was a baby shower of some 44 years ago. I was pregnant with a baby that would soon become my first child, but also the first grandchild and the first great-grandchild in my family. At the time, perhaps I didn't realize but it was a really big deal. My mom's best friend threw me a baby shower, and between her, my mother, and my grandmother, I had huge boxes of handmade baby clothes in three different sizes, along with blankets and all the rest. There was also a beautiful bassinet with a handmade cover and matching bedding. It was an extravagant baby shower, but it didn't end there. After Andrea was born, my grandmother rolled up in her brand new Cadillac to bring her great-granddaughter home from the hospital, in style, as she put it. My mom, her best friend, and my grandmother shared their extravagant love for me and my baby girl. And because of the three of them, along with all the others who attended the baby shower, even though we were out of work and living temporarily with my mom, we had everything we could possibly need or want for our brand new baby. I'm reminded also of another story of extravagant love from a book called Chicken Soup from the for the soul. Perhaps you've heard it before. The author writes, many years ago, when I worked as a volunteer at Stanford Hospital, I got to know a little girl named Liza who was suffering from a rare and serious disease. Her only chance of recovery appeared to be a blood transfusion from her five-year-old brother, who had miraculously survived the same disease and had developed antibodies needed to combat the illness. The doctor explained the whole situation to her little brother and asked if the boy would be willing to give his blood to his sister. I saw him hesitate only for a moment before taking a deep breath and saying, yes, I'll do it, if it will save Liza. As the transfusion progressed, the boy lay in a bed next to his sister and smiled, as we all did, seeing the color returning to Liza's cheeks. But then his face grew pale, and his smile faded, and he looked up at the doctor and asked with a trembling voice, Will I start to die right away? The young boy had misunderstood the doctor. You see, he thought that he was going to have to give his sister all of his blood, end quote. In last week's gospel, we heard the story often referred to as the prodigal son. This, too, was a story. 
story of extravagant love, the love of a father for both of his sons. Even when their behavior was shameful and disrespectful, their father forgave them and loved them so much that he was willing to set aside his own dignity to run down the road to welcome his son and to plead with his other son to come and join in the family celebration. No matter how undeserving they may have been, their father's love was given to them freely and most extravagantly. Today, Jesus is visiting with his good friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And the scene opens with Lazarus lounging at the table with Jesus and the other apostles. Perhaps they're still discussing Jesus' most recent miracle when he raised Lazarus from the dead. As they take in the delicious aromas coming from the kitchen, while Martha lovingly prepares a special meal in Jesus' honor. Soon, Mary enters the room with a very special gift for Jesus. She's holding in her hands a clay jar filled with a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, worth nearly a year's wages, if you can imagine. The Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor writes that Mary then does four remarkable things in a row as everyone watches. First, she loosens her hair in a room full of men, which an honorable woman would never do. Next, she pours some of the perfume onto Jesus' feet, which is also never done by a woman. Then she touches him, a single woman touching a single man's feet, also never done, not even among friends. Finally, Mary wipes the perfume off of his feet with her hair. Totally, inexplicably bizarre to the end, end quote. It's extravagant, it's excessive. Surely Mary's gone overboard just as Judas is quick to note. Why wasn't this perfume sold for a whole lot of money and then given to the poor? The others may be stunned into silence, but Judas wants to know. Jesus, however, seems to brush him off knowing what is soon to come. Leave her alone, he says. She bought it for the day of my burial. Whatever Mary was thinking in her strange act, whatever anyone else in the room thought, Jesus saw it as a message from God. Not the hysterical act of a woman God mad, but a carefully performed act of a prophet. It seems that we're left to wonder, where did Mary learn such extravagant love? Perhaps it began that day when she was sitting at Jesus' feet, listening as one of his own disciples. Since that day, Mary's heard Jesus tell his followers to care for the poor, feed the hungry, welcome the outcast. She's listened as others spoke of Jesus' miracles and teachings when she wasn't there herself. And recently, Mary listened with a broken heart as Jesus wept before Lazarus' tomb. And then, with amazement, she heard Jesus commanding her brother to get up and come out of that tomb. Mary learned such extravagant love from Jesus himself. God so loved the world, choosing to become vulnerable, choosing to become one of us in Jesus, choosing to show us a love that has no boundaries, 
Much like the love of a father for his prodigal son, it's like the love of a little boy for his big sister, or even like the love shown to me and my daughter and the generosity of my mom and our family and friends. Jesus is God's extravagant gift of love for us, for a people who could never deserve it or even hope to earn it. We are given God's loving gift in new life, washed and claimed in baptism, fed and forgiven with Jesus' own body and blood, invited to meet Christ not only in the sacraments, but through the word, read, preached, prayed, and sung. We also receive God's extravagant love through the presence of others. In Christian community, as we gather each Sunday for worship, and even out in the world, through those who aren't yet even aware of God's extravagance. St. Paul speaks of his pressing on, and that's exactly what we do each and every day. We press on, praying that this pandemic will come to an end. We press on, hoping to make ends meet, to do a good job, to study for a test, to provide care for a loved one. We press on, even after the loss of a job, the breakup of a relationship, or the death of a dear one. We press on, in the face of stress or illness, even when we're not sure what tomorrow will bring. We are able to press on because we're not alone. We're not alone in our struggle. Jesus is always with us. Jesus faced it all long before us, weeping at the death of his friend Lazarus, experiencing the despair of rejection in his hometown, the sting of betrayal from his dear friend Judas, being abandoned by so many of his friends and followers just when he needed them most. Jesus knows the depth of our pain, our frustration, our fear, and our need. With Jesus before us, we're able to press on, like Mary long ago, giving extravagantly from the love that God has first given to us. On this final Sunday in Lent, and every time we gather in Jesus' name, we encounter the risen Christ, whose extravagant love gives us the strength and the courage not only to press on for ourselves, but for those around us, for our friends and family, for our community, and for a world so desperately in need. God's loving extravagance works always in us and through us all. Thanks. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 759, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Hymn number 759 will be singing stanzas 1, 3, and 4. I invite you to stand as your people.
merciful God, you may respond and receive our prayer. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from the paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory tri of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of, cli of climate scientists and research working to chart a new course. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for anyone that is unemployed or underemployed. For those experiencing homelessness and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Especially those on our prayer list and those we offer now out loud or in our hearts. We pray for the family of Randy Dunlap for the congregation of St. Paul's, for those suffering in the Ukraine and surrounding countries. We pray for all who are homeless and those who do not yet know the extravagant love of our Lord. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing within us, direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify, amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver, I'm sorry, deliver us especially from the scourge of racism and all other isms. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with, and also you. with you. We continue in this time of pandemic still not safe shaking hands or hugging, but we can and we should offer a sign of God's peace to those who are here in person with a wave, a smile, a peace sign, a bow, and for those who are unable to be here, we should offer our God's peace with a text, an email, a card, a letter, or even a phone call. Let us reach out to each other with God's own love and peace. God works in us, through us, and through our giving to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and you can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let's be a blessing for others, as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and the blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift Amen. them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 
Come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Amen. broadcasting on Facebook Live this morning, and this video will be uploaded to our Facebook page immediately following worship and later on to our YouTube channel. Either may be accessed from our website at www.stephansyracuse.org. That's Stephan with a PH. Following the guidelines of the CDC, Recently, we've been requiring masks only for those who are vaccinated. Not vaccinated. How, how, or not vaccinated. Yes, thank you, Fred. Not vaccinated. However, given the recent uh, uptick in cases and hospitalizations, the council has voted once again to require masks for everyone um, starting this next Sunday, on um, Palm Sunday, that's next Sunday, by the way. Yep. It is a CDC recommendation for Onondaga County. It is a CDC recommendation for on Onondaga County. And so we are following their recommendation to require masks once more <laughs> until things level off to a safer level. Um, if you're not feeling well, however, for any reason whatsoever, we ask that you please stay home and help us to prevent the spread of any type of illness. Also, if you or someone you know might benefit from pastoral care or contact, please let me know. Call the office and leave a message or send me an email. But if it's an emergency, please call my cell phone or send me a text message. I will reach out however I am able. You may have noticed uh, the goldenrod papers. Uh, things were emailed, mailed, they're here. Uh, for Easter flowers, every year 
Our Easter flowers are funded, partially at least, by those who uh, want to sponsor them on behalf of honoring or remembering loved ones. Um, in the past, we've asked for like $3, but honestly, each flower pot is $15. So if you are able to sponsor the full price of one or more of those, we appreciate your generosity. Uh, however, if you're only able to donate $3, we're okay with that too. Um, so use the flyer, put the names on there, put how much money, uh, your envelope number if you remember it, and your name. Um, and make sure you make the checks out to St. Stephen. And in the memo section, please note Easter flowers. Also, our regular Sunday flowers could use some, uh, some support. I think that fund is running low as well. Um, right on the bulletin board outside the office, there's a big uh, poster that lists the dates. Uh, for every month and uh, if you put your name in there and send your donation in um, that name will be noted not just in the announcements but we will note it up on one of the slides as well so a couple of ways to support flowers at St. Stephen also next week is Holy Week and uh, as I said Palm Sunday is uh, next week. So we will have a big celebration. We will not start over there. We're going to be starting right here. And uh, the procession will come straight down the aisle waving, and we'll all wave palms, okay? So uh, everyone will get palms and be invited to wave their palms in celebration of the triumphant entry of Jesus to Jerusalem. Um, and then we will have a congregational reading of the Passion. Um, uh, Zach and Stephen, please stay for a minute or two after worship today so I can talk to you about next Sunday. Um, let's see. Oh, I think I, oh, after Palm Sunday, there is this whole thing called Holy Week. So there is what we call Maundy, M-A-U-N-D-Y, Maundy, which comes from the word mandate or command. Uh, Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. On Monday Thursday, we remember Jesus' command to love as he loves. And on Thursday, we will once again remember the passion of Christ and his death. So after that, of course, is Easter. So uh, video only on Monday, Thursday. Um, you'll be able to access that from our website. Uh, and then on Monday, Thursday, we will be here at 5.30. Good Friday. Good Friday, we will be here at 5.30. At, on Good Friday. The um, 15th, I think. Yep. Right? See, yep. I need corrections. Oh, yeah, just look up there. It tells you. Um, on, uh, Ed, Ed and I will take care of the correction as well. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on Good Friday, we will be here at 5.30. If you're not able to come that early, St. Paul's will be uh, having their Good Friday service at 7.30. Uh, and then, of course, Easter is at 9 a.m. So as you can see, April 10th, Palm Sunday, 9 a.m. April 14th, Monday, Thursday, video only. We're going to post it at noon. April 15th, Good Friday at 5.30, both in person and online. And finally, April 17th, uh, the Sunday of the Resurrection, also known as Easter. 9 a.m. both in person and online and there is our website address for you to access all of the videos and i think fred has an announcement that he'd like to bring forth two short announcements one uh, it is with great joy 
I'm so delighted to um, reaffirm that the choir will be back on Easter Sunday. I am thrilled for that. So for those of you who are interested in joining the choir, as I quipped last week, the only requirement is that you laugh at my jokes, okay? You don't have to sing, you don't have to read, have to sing well, you don't have to read music, nothing. Just laugh at my jokes. They do actually have to sing. They, oh yeah, yeah, you gotta sing, but you don't have to sing well. Okay. Okay, okay, you gotta sing well. Okay, uh, the other thing, uh, one of the other hats that I wear um, in my in my work is I'm, I'm uh, um, blessed to be co-chair of the Social Justice Committee for the uh, Syracuse Teachers Association, and we are partnering with uh, Victory Temple, which is a very community-minded church in the neighborhood of, Doc, of Steve and Dr. King, where I teach, and we're going to be sponsoring, going to be co-sponsoring a laundry detergent giveaway. We're sponsoring a laundry detergent giveaway at Dr. King next Saturday. We are looking for donations of either laundry detergent, any kind of laundry detergent, or um, funds to buy laundry detergent. Typically, between 200 and 300 families come for these um, come for these these dis distributions, and we're looking forward to being a real presence in the community. So, if you wish to drop off actual laundry detergent, you may do so at all through the week at church. I will pick it up on on Friday. Or if you just wish to make a uh, monetary donation. Uh, you may see me after I donate in cash. If you have a check, you can make it out to Syracuse Teachers Association or simply STA. Checks or cash or laundry detergent. All are very welcome for this very important outreach to our community. And the office is... Uh, there are office hours on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So you may want to think about that. Call the office before you bring in your laundry detergent. Um, and uh, Fred will pick it up on Friday on or the weekend. I'll pick it up on Friday and then the distribution is on Saturday. On Saturday. Okay, so we need to get it in by this coming Friday. All right, any other announcements? Diaper challenge? The diaper and uh, women's sanitary products challenge. Um, we are also collecting for that. That goes to the uh, women and children of the Ukraine who are displaced um, and in great need. Um, so if you want to bring in some laundry detergent and a box of diapers or other feminine products, please do so as soon as possible. Um, perhaps this week uh, would be the best time to do it so we can get it out to them. And um, there was one other thing, wasn't there? Well, Alan Ferguson, you can oh, yes. announce a new So um, yesterday I had the honor of hosting the our, our conference assembly at St. Paul's. And we elected a new dean of the conference. So uh, dean uh, Gail Walling will go up to June um, at the Synod Assembly. But our new dean is Alan Ferguson, who is a pastor. Oh, gosh, he's been a pastor for a long time. I believe he was a, a Met Methodist pastor um, who changed over to uh, Lutheran probably about eight years ago. Um, he served uh, in the Northern Churches for a little while, and now he serves at St. Michael's in, no. Faith Cicero. At Faith Cicero. One of those sea towns. I was gonna say St. Michael's, but. Okay, he, he, say, he serves at Faith Lutheran in Cicero, and I imagine um, he will get installed at the Synod Assembly, um, along with everyone else who is going to be installed. And we're looking for people that might be interested in going to the center of the Right. We have two spots. <laughs>
for representatives to attend Senate Assembly. If you are interested in attending, it will be in person this year, but it will be very short. Uh, the uh, uh, Senate Assembly opens with worship at 6.30, I think it serves dinner before that, and they start uh, accepting people around two. Yeah. Um, and then it will begin uh, right after worship and through the day on Monday, and then uh, it's over. So uh, that's it. It's, it's basically kind of a 24-hour thing in which we will be electing a new president, no, a new vice president of the Senate Council. Um, this is a lay position, so I guess a long time ago, for those of you who've been lifelong Lutherans, you'll remember that the bishop was called the, pre the president, I guess, and then a lay person was the vice president. Um, but now we have a bishop and a vice president. So uh, the person who has been serving, me? Tom Madden. Tom Madden has served for, I don't know, eight years or, or so. And he's done an amazing job. Um, we did not uh, lift up anyone from Central Crossroads, but I'm sure that there will be plenty of people to choose from uh, in that vote. And so that's why this particular Senate Assembly is very important. Uh, and uh, there are a few other positions we'll be electing and we'll get the news uh, from the bishop, our brand new bishop's uh, report, and, and so forth. So again, if you are interested in attending, St. Stephen puts the bill for travel and staying the night at the hotel. Um, talk to Greg, and we will get you hooked up. Um, I guess that's it for announcements. Please stand as you're able for the blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 685, 685, Take My Life That I May Be. We will be singing stanzas one, three, four, and six. 